Hello everyone, uh, in this short uh, video presentation I'll talk about Wally, this paper from 2023 by Microsoft. Uh, I'll explain uh, what they try to achieve and how they try to achieve or solve this problem. And uh, I'll emphasize why this uh, paper is specifically interesting and stands out uh, compared to other papers. So first of all, uh, what they try to achieve, uh, the main idea of this paper main target is to generate uh, some speech uh, for an unseen speaker uh, with some given prompt. Uh, let's say we have some phrase given uh, by some speaker, uh, usually from 5 to 10 seconds of audio, and we want to generate some uh, piece of text. Uh, for, for example, uh, we are giving this piece of text and we want to generate it, and we gener want to generate it uh, using uh, this voice. And the only thing we have this like uh, maybe 10, 5 uh, sounds, uh, seconds of audio. With, with... He told his visitors as he lighted a pipe. With... So we have this phrase, right? It's totally different from this one. Uh, and we want to generate this phrase given this uh, speaker uh, <clears throat> uh, prompt. But basically I want to clone this uh, uh, voice. Let's see how this uh, model works. Instead of shoes, the old man wore boots with turnover tops and his blue coat had wide cuffs of gold braid. Yeah, uh, it works quite nicely. And uh, let's hear how ground truth sounds like. Uh, ground truth, in, in, his, in this case, uh, the same speaker, he read this line of text uh, by himself, or we just found it somewhere uh, talking this line. Instead of shoes, the old man wore boots with turnover tops, and his blue coat had wide cuffs of gold braid. And generate the speech again. Instead of shoes, the old man wore boots with turnover tops, and his blue coat had wide cuffs of gold braid. So we hear uh, that uh, these two audio records uh, sounds quite alike. Uh, of course, if we kind of hear more car carefully, uh, we can distinguish and uh, figure out that this audio was generated. But uh, anyway. That sounds pretty cool. And uh, <clears throat> for example, if we use it in some applications, uh, we can say that this audio degradation was caused not by generating a generated system uh, in this um, case by this model, but maybe uh, due to some uh, signal transmission, uh, bad connection, or anything else. So um, in real world applications, this is uh, quite uh, quite good enough. Let's say this quality is, is good enough. Uh, anyway, uh, let's get uh, <clears throat> back to the paper and uh, discuss how they achieved uh, these good results. Uh, so, uh, what we have here? Uh, the paper is here, actually, uh, demo audio records uh, you can find here. Uh, following this link, it just went through. Uh, there are three main points, three main points for this paper, uh, three main uh, ideas. Uh, the first one, let's use bigger data sets. The second one, uh, audio language models. We are all familiar with different types of language models. Uh, and right now, um, it's new type of language models or yeah, a new application or new look on language models, audio and language models. Uh, basically, let's combine audio and language models and take all advantages all and, or <laughs> take all good things uh, which language models can bring or to give to us. And neural audio codec. Now, neural audio codec, it's another model. Uh, the idea of this model is to kind of compress our audio signal into some uh, compact representation so we can compress it later uh, for some usage. Let's say we compress this audio, uh, we transmit it somewhere using fewer number of bits uh, or yeah, a few resources, and then we unpack it and uh, we see this <coughs> and we hear we hear this audio like never happened, uh, fully restored, with uh, almost unnoticeable changes or losses in uh, its performance. So again, uh, three three main points, three main points for this uh, paper and for this idea to to work quite uh, good. Uh, so authors themselves they emphasize importance of uh, uh, good data sets and uh, actually that's the first problem they. Um, we're going to focus on because if you don't have a good data set, uh, changes in architecture would probably bring uh, only small uh, or maybe um, unnoticeable 
uh, improvements. So to get really outstanding result, uh, we need to have a bigger uh, and nicer and cleaner data set. Uh, nobody talks right now that in this paper, authors proposed or used a cleaner or better data, data set, but they used a bigger data set. Uh, their data set contained 60,000 hours of English speech, uh, which is on average uh, kind of 10 times bigger uh, compared to other TTS um, models because most of the other TTS models trained uh, on, a, on average on 6K uh, or 6,000 hours of English speech. So 10 times more. One of the interesting things about this model, uh, it's just, just something uh, to highlight, uh, this uh, MOS metric. So MOS metric or CMOS metric, it's mean, mean opinion score uh, when uh, some number of people kind of evaluates quality uh, of this model, uh, how good it is. And uh, when I first compared uh, audios generated by this model with ground truth, uh, so audios uh, actually spoken by some people, uh, they found that <laughs> People kind of like more audios generated by the model. Uh, people on average tend to um, think that uh, audios generated by the model are more real than uh, real audios. Um, it's difficult to say if like 0 uh, 0.04 uh, is kind of statistically significant uh, performance or improvement or difference, uh, but anyway, uh, anyway, it's better uh, because in previous works on uh, speech generation, um, we're looking only um, on values of mean opinion score below uh, ground truth. Right now, you're looking on values which are kind of higher than ground truth. Again, if you move back to um, generated samples, uh, we just heard that uh, the generated samples kind of degrade, uh, degraded, right? So, um, generated. Uh, samples are not as good as real uh, samples uh, or ground truth samples. Still, on average, probably there are some qualities or things which people don't notice, which are more important for people, uh, which are present uh, in this model. And one of the reasons, yeah, there are some specific, uh, maybe timbre, maybe uh, some phonemes are better generated uh, or something else. Because if you want, we kind of can hear the difference if you know which one is which but uh, if you don't know which one is which uh, yeah uh, <coughs> people tend to prefer uh, this model more it's it's interesting it's it's really interesting uh, let's go further so uh, in the paper authors give really nice uh, um, overview of zero shot uh, models text-to-speech models basically they highlight that um, there are three main parts of uh, zero-shot text-to-speech models. It's uh, <coughs> uh, encoder, uh, it's a decoder, uh, and uh, it's uh, mm, a block which generates uh, uh, actual audio uh, from a given male spectrogram, and it's speaker encoder block. So a speaker encoder block, we need to encode uh, information about uh, our speaker. And uh, in previous works, uh, people usually train this model separately. So we have some uh, block which converts our mouse spectrogram into uh, audio uh, samples is one block, then uh, speaker encoding, uh, it's another block, and uh, some block which kind of encodes uh, our prompt into male spectrogram, it's another block. And all these parts could be trained uh, together or separately. Of course, if, if we train all the, these parts together, um, it would provide better results for, and if we train it for one speaker. Uh, but if we train all these parts for different speakers, eh, maybe quality won't be that good, but uh, you would be able to apply it for many speakers. So there are trade-offs, uh, there are some, something uh, to choose from uh, and uh, there are some problems uh, highlighted uh, in this direction. Uh, so, mm, yeah, as I said here, uh, th these are the points I just uh, discussed. Uh, another topics they highlight in their paper uh, or bring for the discussion is speech-to-speech -speech models uh, or uh, audio language modeling approach to audio generation and unsupervised or self-supervised training, which actually can be also applied for this problem. Uh, but 
uh, they're not uh, they didn't kind of use it unless they think about uh, neural codec as a as something as something as a unsupervised or self-supervised map retraining so this is a model this is a model and it's quite simple uh, as i said uh, there are three parts uh, bigger data set and uh, language model approach and uh, acoustic uh, encoding so what, what we have here imagine a uh, simple language model sec to sec model uh, and, and that's it basically you don't need anything else uh, we have some conditional phoneme uh, some conditional vector uh, we have uh, uh, our audio uh, also as a conditioning uh, and we send it to some encoder then encoder proceed, uh, proceeds it and uh, splits out uh, let's say some vector of generated tokens and it, it will be exactly the same as a language model uh, except uh, instead of tokens in language model uh, here we would use different tokens and tokens here uh, they're produced by this uh, uh, neural encoder uh, neural encoder so now uh, people found that uh, representations uh, produced by this neural encoder uh, actually quite good uh, and can be used as tokens uh, in this uh, like let's say audio uh, language model and, and and that's it the, the, the solution basically what we do we tokenize our audio uh, into some tokens with a neural encoder and then uh, we use simple language model uh, to generate uh, new uh, tokens and uh, these tokens can be converted into audio using the same uh, codec uh, neural uh, codec uh, encoder and decoder uh, after all then, and that's it that, that, that's the that's basic idea and it works uh, perfectly uh, so uh, what we have as the input at the input we have uh, our um, prompt uh, more precisely we have uh, phonemes uh, for our prompt and we have uh, encoded representation of uh, our speaker uh, voice we want to generate and that's it that's uh, going to work uh, a few more notes uh, on this thing uh, yeah here a few more notes on this thing uh, new, uh, this neural encoder it encodes our audio in eight components it can be uh, more components but uh, in this work uh, authors use uh, used eight components and one of the reasons uh, they used one eight components uh, there is a pre-trained uh, available model for it and so you can use it this uh, uh, encoding uh, model is pre-trained available and uh, so authors use this um, uh, pre-trained model to generate these uh, representations so uh, as i said uh, uh, on the input uh, into uh, neural uh, codec you send one audio and it splits uh, eight components uh, eight components uh, representing different uh, values each component uh, produced by eliminating or reducing residual error it's it's not important uh, for, for this specific work uh, except one thing that the first component probably contains uh, the most of the information here so usually when you deal with uh, speech generation problems uh, or speech generation in general there is a problem to estimate length of new generated audio and it can be solved um, using different approaches one of the approaches is to use uh, some predictor we can predict uh, length of the new uh, or future audio uh, or future speech or uh, we can generate our new audio autoregressively uh, and we keep generating it until we meet uh, end of sentence token exactly the same as we do in uh, language or text procedure uh, text processing or yeah, other language models, uh, NLP uh, tasks. Uh, but uh, there is uh, some um, potential to speed things up uh, because uh, this part, uh, encoder or neural codec, splits eight components, right? We can use only the first component uh, to uh, for auto regressive generation, and th that's what they do. Uh, they use the first component for auto regressive generation. Uh, that's why we know when we should stop and that's why how we know uh, where is the end of the sentence right and for the rest of the components uh, it's not autoregressive uh, and since it's not autoregressive it's going to be much much faster and that's it that's actually all the main difficulties or uh, kind of model 
um, challenges or solutions they provided uh, into the paper. And it works uh, very nice. Uh, again, uh, th three, three main components, right? Three main components, uh, bigger data set, um, approach as a language model, and uh, they tokenize um, our speech using uh, neural codex. That's it, and it works uh, very nicely. And there are some technicalities like uh, using uh, autoregressive approach and non-autoregressive approach uh, jointly. And actually, that stands here. NAR stands for non-autoregressive approach, and AR stands for autoregressive approach. Uh, so that's it. That's it. There are some technicalities. Uh, yeah, there are some technicalities on the. Uh, training procedure, uh, which is not that uh, kind of scary as for huge language models, but still still quite quite big. Uh, the model itself is not that big, so it's just 12 layers of 16 at, uh, with 16 attention heads for uh, encoder and for decoder with uh, kind of the usual size of the embedding um, size. And uh, <coughs> These kind of standard uh, fit forward layer dimensions. That's uh, that's pretty much the standard nowadays. Uh, yeah, uh, training was done on 16 NVIDIA Teslas and uh, using uh, 100 GPUs. Uh, again, uh, a future. So as as an evaluation metrics, uh, they used uh, uh, word edit uh, error. Uh, they used. Uh, some mm, uh, metrics to compare uh, generated speakers. Uh, for example, there is a task speaker ver verification, and we use some metrics from spe speaker verification problem to compare a generated speech with ground truth speech. Uh, if this metric is very small, then it's good. And uh, of course, we can use uh, human-based metrics, uh, comparative mean opinion score. Uh, it's done by people. And similarity mean opinion score, uh, it's also done by, by people. So basically, it says how one audio is similar to another audio. Basically, again, uh, kind of similar to speaker verification approach. We compare similarity of two uh, audio tracks belonging to the same person. And this results. This results, uh, yeah, obviously, uh, they're kind of uh, much better uh, than most of the previous uh, papers. Uh, Mainly, authors compare themselves with uh, your TTS, uh, this paper, and uh, we see that compared to your TTS, uh, it was the previous approach for zero shot uh, voice cloning, they're kind of far, far behind uh, compared to Wally. Uh, basically, that's it for all the other metrics. Uh, you can look into the paper uh, with more details. Most of the metrics basically say this approach is much better than all previous approaches. What else is important to know about this paper uh, and about this work? Uh, here it is. Uh, so, uh, this part, this data set is available. Uh, you can use it, it's open because they uh, use it from another work. Uh, they didn't use uh, or collect their own data set, they kind of pre processed uh, some other data set. Uh, Audio language model is not available, so they don't uh, provide code or pre-trained weights for the model. But uh, neuro audio codec model is also available. Uh, it's pre-trained, and you also can use it. And there are some uh, solutions or attempt on GitHub to replicate this model. I, I haven't seen if it was trained yet, but uh, I've seen the code, and it doesn't look that scary. Well, that's it. Thank you for watching. I hope it was uh, useful and.